We've all played the game Connect the Dots when we were children. We'd be given a piece of paper with a seemingly random set of dots on the page. And we would strain our brain to try and connect those dots, try and see what that image was. <clears throat> Unable to do so, we would, we would take out a, a pen or a pencil and we'd furiously connect those dots. And then we'd step back with wonderment and amazement at the image that revealed itself, an image we could not see until we connected the dots. This is a story of connecting the dots to create a social impact fund. Nurturing an idea to spur the nonprofit sector to create social innovation in an economically viable and self-sustaining manner. No doubt many of you are sitting there feeling a little bit like, like Ricky Ricardo at this moment. Okay, Lucy, explain. Well, before I do some splaining, let me give you a little background on how I think and some observations about the nonprofit sector. People who know me well know that I'm a people watcher. I like to observe, often sitting in silence, taking it all in, and not because I'm not interested. It's because my brain likes to take in what my mind is seeing. Now, for some of you, it happens in the middle of the night, driving your car, perhaps even in the shower. For me, truly great ideas happen when I let myself think. Now, like you, sometimes I overthink or think too much, but that's a story for another day. Some people listen, other people merely hear, waiting for a pause, waiting for their moment to talk. I, on the other hand, my listening skills can be somewhat challenged. And again, not because I'm disinterested. Rather, when I'm listening to somebody, I'm rather fully engaged. In fact, I'm so engaged that it's like I'm on a plane somewhere, far, far away. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's like my brain is working three or four chess moves ahead of reality, which is often the case when I'm trying to synthesize disparate ideas in new and novel ways. The nonprofit sector is broken. And I'm not going to go through the valid criticisms that Dan Pallotta renders in his very poignant TED Talk, which I'd encourage each of you to listen to if you haven't, or to listen to it again if you have. No, for me, as a business model for innovation, the nonprofit sector is broken. We can no longer just tell employees of the nonprofits to stalk wealthy individuals, corporations, foundations in a model that cannibalizes those precious resources from other nonprofits. It's a zero-sum game, a race to the bottom. Yet this is an industry at the forefront of society's most pressing issues. But the business model is inadequate to meet the ever-growing needs of our society. This is a journey to make a difference in the world to reinvent the way we think about social innovation and the nonprofit business model. This journey began with a question. You know, you can change the world with a question. So I'd encourage each and every one of you to ask a question and maybe even a follow-up question. As my friend Ben DuPont said just the other night, answers have a finite shelf life. Questions endure. You never know when you ask a question where it will take you. I certainly didn't at the time. The process of answer, asking questions rather is a lot like playing connect the dots, except many of the necessary dots will simply be missing. So your journey is to not only identify dots, but to create dots along the way. With a small group of people, I'm a co-founder of something called Started Up Delaware. We aim to be a catalyst for dreamers. We aim to break down the barriers to being an entrepreneur. And while we have wonderful co-working space and phenomenal community programming, those only go so far. So I asked a simple question. Why would anyone ever come to Delaware to start a company? And I don't mean merely incorporate the way the vast majority of companies do. I mean truly come here to start a company. And while it wasn't obvious until all the dots were connected. It was that simple question that led to the creation of the Social Impact Fund. See, the first question led to a second question, which is if you're going to start a company, what is it that you need? Human capital is certainly important, but at your core as a startup company, you need one thing and one thing only. 
And that's a customer. See, if you can't get someone to buy your product, your service, your solution, then you either need to change your business, go out of business, or in my mind, you look like a nonprofit. The next question became, how could we distinguish ourselves here in Delaware when it came to a customer? When we surveyed the landscape, quickly three industries bubble up to the top as possibilities where we could provide access to a customer. Healthcare, where I spend a vast majority of my time. Financial services and education. Again, not realizing at the time a first dot had been observed. See, part of the art of seeing the world differently is seeing the world in the first place. So I made a mental note of something gray, as dots don't always come in black and white. Now, in parallel, I was traveling the country and I was visiting with incubators and accelerators and co-working spaces and innovation labs. And with a few exceptions, one observation kept coming up. The process for innovation needs to be rethought. See, these incubators and accelerators had become businesses, big businesses, dare I say, even industries unto themselves. An accelerator is a program where they try and compress time. They take an idea and run it through some lean startup methodology and ideation and customer validation and try and do that in 12 and 16 week periods. <clears throat> and incubators provide some co-working space and mentorship and oversight, but Harvard Business Review recently said that Incubators don't go far enough. They don't provide enough oversight and guidance. The business model of the incubator and the accelerator is to churn out as many companies as possible. Take a small equity stake in each of them. And like the venture capital market, hope that over time you find the proverbial needle in the haystack. That one or two of those companies make up the return for the entire portfolio. And I get that business model if you're funding it. But if you look at the world differently, like I do, if you ask a different question, you can't help but conclude that there are too many poorly vetted, poorly thought through ideas that shouldn't see the light of day that are being funded. So with a little bit of tongue in my cheek, I came up with the term nurturator. See, the term nurturator is meant to reflect the core value that people, companies, and ideas need to be nurtured. They don't need to be accelerated, as you end up with too many false positives or too many false negatives. They don't need to be incubated, as that doesn't go far enough. No, we need a nurturator. We need a platform to nurture people, companies, and ideas. Another dot. As I continued on my quest to ask questions and to find dots and connect dots, I came across a company called Health for America. Health for America, in its broadest sense, is a combination of Teach for America and the White House Fellowship Program. In fact, it was founded by a White House Fellow. Forbes magazine described Health for America as harnessing the power of young people to be at the forefront as a catalyst for change. A year ago, a number of Health for America Fellows were placed into Johns Hopkins, where they innovated into, in pediatric asthma, and they created a business by living inside an organization. Another dot. As I began to mull over these dots in my head and try and figure out were there dots that were missing, could I connect these dots? I was convinced I had the answer. So I walked into the CEO's office of Christiana Care, one of the largest hospital systems here in America. And I said, will you be dot number one? Will you be our customer? Will you allow us to augment your innovation resources? Allow us to open up the cabinets, rummage through the drawers? Sit side by side with you and experience the pain that you're experiencing in healthcare as a means to create innovation. Unfortunately, I couldn't answer any of his questions. He said to me, what will you work on? What resources do you need? What actually are you asking me for? Unable to answer his question, questions, rather, I left his office with half a dot colored in. So what did I have at this point in the journey? I had an industry healthcare. I had a customer, well, sort of. I had a platform called this Nurturator. I had some resources in these Health for America fellows. The next question became, could I find capital to support this idea, support this vision that I had? 
And in my discussions with capital, I became exposed to something called social impact bonds. Social impact bonds were pioneered in the United Kingdom and has since been implemented here in the United States and New York and Massachusetts. Simply put, social impact bonds create a unique partnership between the public and the private sector. Where well, the private sector says to the public sector, we can do better. We can solve a problem in a way that you're not solving it. So we're gonna put our own capital at risk to solve those problems. And if we solve those problems, you're gonna repay those obligations. And if we don't solve those problems, if we don't create value, then there's no repayment obligation. See, the key is that risk capital gets deployed to solve a social mission. I suddenly had discovered two more dots. It was one thing to have capital. It was orders of magnitude different to have a social mission. This dot felt gigantic. A way to change the nonprofit business model, a way to spur innovation within the nonprofit business model. What did I have at this point? Well, I had an industry healthcare. I had a customer, well, sort of. I had this platform, the Nurturator. I had resources in these Health for America fellows. I had capital, and I had a social mission. Now all I had to do was put all the dots on a page, create that image, connect the dots, let other people see what I was seeing. See, I'm a big believer in the marketplace for ideas. Ideas are like art and music and books and poetry. They're limitless. The only limitation are the limitations in our minds. Ideas need oxygen to breathe. Ideas need to be socialized. Ideas need to be nurtured. So as I contemplated, I had this hazy notion of how I could fit all this together. I had this social mission, but I was unable to paint this picture. And slowly as I continued to have dialogue, the picture started to emerge. We were gonna take capital we were going to take capital and hire these resources, these Health for America fellows, and we were going to put them in the healthcare industry. We were going to allow them to innovate inside the industry. We were going to create businesses from the inside. And if we were right, we were going to create value. And if we created value, we were going to be able to replay the, repay that capital. Unexpectedly, the next dot appeared. See, in my conversations with capital, they said, look, we don't want to be repaid. If we create success, if we create value, we want that value to be put back into the system to fund future social innovation, to fund future changes. See, in my conversations, we don't not only found a way to change the nonprofit business model, to spur social innovation, we had found a way to do this in an economically viable and now self-sustaining manner. I'm proud to say that in September, we launched the Started Up Delaware Social Impact Fund. With initial backing from Discover Bank and the Verizon Foundation, we hired four Health for America fellows. We placed them into the healthcare system at Christiana Care where they're focused on cardiology. They're focused on congestive heart failure, which disproportionately affects the low to moderate income members of our community. They've solved a social mission. We believe over the next 10 months as they go through this Nurturator program that they will come up with a product, a service, a solution that creates economic viability. And if we're right in the long term, we'll create value for our partners. In this case, Christiana Care has agreed as our partner to take that value and put it back into the system to create social innovation in the future. So by asking questions and by discovering dots and creating dots, we found a way to change the nonprofit business model, to spur social innovation in an economically viable and self-sustaining manner. I'd like to leave you with a challenge. My challenge to you is to ask questions. My challenge to you is to identify dots, to create dots, create ideas, and nurture them. Thank you very much.